What's up, everybody? We're back again with another interview. JD, G, the Otaku Fix. Y'all already know who we are. We have a very special guest with us today, Brandon Chin, the cr- other creator of Just a Goblin. Um, first and foremost, how are you doing today? Uh, I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. Glad to hear that. Um, whew, it's, it's been a while. Uh, like we were speaking offline, you know, we, we've been trying to get in touch with you for a minute. So just to finally have you here um is a huge joy for us and thank you again for just taking time out of your busy schedule to do this interview with us um because i we we assume you're very busy with the amount of series and projects you have going on currently yeah it's um i mean it's it's busy and like it's it's just a little crazy i think um i don't know like i i don't know how many series i'm writing right now like probably like because like there's a there's like five that are released but Mm -hmm. there's probably like another five or so behind the scenes so right whatever you guys think i'm doing i'm probably doing a little bit more but (laughs) it's nice because on the writing side you know it's not as intensive as the art side because Mm -hmm. i get to write ahead of time Mm -hmm. whereas artists have to meet the week-to-week schedule right right so well well, at least you just have to worry about the um, writing side yeah if i was doing art i could only do i could not do as much as i do now for sure have you ever thought about doing um writing and art um i used to be i used to be an artist actually so i um was an artist back when i when i was younger so like i was like a teenager Mm -hmm. but then i decided to uh I think I was like starting to take like this whole writing or art thing really seriously because I was writing and doing art, but then I realized I probably am not going to be like really really good at both, mm-hmm. and and the ch- the chances of that happening are very low. So what I did when I was like I don't know fourteen or so, I flipped a coin. Heads, mm-hmm. I'm a writer. Tails, I'm a artist, and it landed on heads. And you just so I quit it. art. <laughs> no, no, you really, that's, you really flipped the it. coin. That's, yeah, I flipped a coin, and that was the Dude, that's decider. A crazy of my gamble, bro. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I was oh, like man. 14. I'm like, I'm not going to be super good at both. So mm-hmm. I don't know. I was like, just gotta, just gotta pick one and just go with it. I think I, I, I read somewhere that I don't remember what the source was, but some, something convinced me that you can, if you practice one thing really intent, intensely, mm-hmm. then you have a better chance of success. Oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah, that, that is true. So, that so is yeah, true. it's focusing on one made sense, but still risking it. The coin, <laughs> like, the coin flip is crazy. Risky. I'd be, in, I'd be in a different place if I was an artist for sure. So, hey, as long as it worked out, and it, it is working out, so it, it did work out in in a very lucky way. So, right, but yeah. All right, so awesome. um, a lot of people probably know you. Um, especially now from just a goblin your most recent series um that you collaborate with with nu pen and jks manga um for those who do not know about just a goblin um and if you don't know you should you should definitely go read this great series but um, can you give a brief description of just a goblin yeah so just a goblin is about i don't know who how many people who are watching have played like video games but it's a, it's kind of like a fantasy game where um, you know goblin in, in a lot of fantasy games adventurers are the players and they go around and they kill monsters and one of the monsters that they kill usually like in the tutorial or very early on in the game are goblins mm-hmm. and so uh, we decided to create a series from the woke side of the goblins where these goblins are just living their lives and they're getting executed and slaughtered by these adventurers for uh no other reason than just like you know uh what's it called like the quests pretty much because adventurers have to kill them for reasons mm-hmm. and so the the quest are these reasons early on experience <laughs> yeah and so the story follows a very young and intelligent goblin named nog and his friend um gubble and uh they're interested in discovering why um adventurers are killing their kind mm-hmm. and so uh I don't want to spoil too much, but you know, it's it's basically their adventure as as a duo duo of goblins um, infiltrating the world of this world of humans. Um, it's actually pretty funny because it's like a very um, <laughs> very racist. Uh, <laughs> there's a very there's a lot of race stuff going on in, in the story, but yeah, I try true. and like you know I try and tell it in a way that is not so like forcing it down everyone's throat, like you know, Beating but. Them in the head. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But um, yeah, I don't know. It's a it's a hardcore show. Then definitely is that. Definitely is that. Um, me personally, I'm 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 kind of upset at all three of you because I have to re up on fast pass coins every week. Uh, um, <laughs> because I'm, I'm just like, look, I, I can't wait. I'm just fast pass everything from now on. It, it's so th- thanks to y'all. I have to constantly give webtoons money. So, <laughs> well, we appreciate the support. Uh, our wallets do. So, no, I'm good. but like, yeah, I think, you know, I think uh, we appreciate anyone who fast passes. But yeah, I mean, I think we also write the series and and draw the series in a way that is meant to to keep people wanting to read and binge binge the whole thing and have an enjoyable experience so yeah definitely it's definitely enjoyable so um how did the three of you meet jks and any pen how did that (laughs) this collaboration come about from your side Hmm. your your side of it (laughs) yeah (laughs) my side um i (sighs) You already interviewed both of them, so it's just gonna be really awkward if our stories don't match up. Um, <laughs> and you ask them, and they're like, "Yeah, we met like over coffee," and I'll be like, "I have no idea how I met these guys." <laughs> um, I think you knew, like, I knew of his art because his art was really good, and I probably reached out to him a few times to be like, "Hey, what's up? Like, mm-hmm. I like your art. You want to work together at some point, etc., cetera, etc." Cetera. Jack, Jack is actually a famous author. He was yeah. like a famous author that slid into my DMs one day. Okay. And he was like, he was like, I don't know if that's what he told you guys, but he slid into my DMs mm-hmm. 100%. And he was like, you know, I just think it's really cool what you're doing with the internet stuff. Because if, you know, you guys don't uh, don't know, I post a lot of stuff on the internet, like mm-hmm. uh, videos and all that stuff talking about like the industry or my projects or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so he was really interested in that um, because he was more faceless at the time mm-hmm. um and then uh i don't know he like told me about his like adventures as a novel author I, w- I was also a novelist but i kind of like shifted from novels to more manga and webtoons and but he was still doing novels and so he was telling me about that and then i was like wow it'd be really cool to you're so successful you know you have all these readers it'd be cool to collaborate on something and uh i think he was involved with another company that inu does art for called shrine yes yeah, sure. um and so they uh they knew each other i knew inu through like just watching his art and then jack and i were trying to build a collaboration to pitch to webtoon and so uh naturally the concepts that we came up with or i was pitching a bunch of concepts he pitched a bunch of concepts just the goblin was a series that i came up with in college mm-hmm and uh we just ended up running with that and uh yeah and then we were like inu's the best art style that could fit this kind of goofy goofy but shown in serious esque concept mm. so that's how we met does that does that somewhat align with what they said or is that completely different <laughs> kinda, kinda. yeah it aligns it aligns okay it aligns yeah, you're safe you're safe <laughs> <laughs> So yeah. what's it like working with them? Because I mean, like you got different states, different time zones, different a lot of different variables. Yeah, yeah. So I think Inu Inu is pretty chill to work with. He definitely like I don't know. He's always working. He's always drawing. So I just like will be like, hey, what's? Or he he just stays up really late, and he's in he's in California or West mm-hmm. Coast, mm-hmm. and so his time zone is like. He's always up at like my 3 a.m. He's like, Brandon, like, can you check this art pe- this art new panel I did? And I'm like, I'm about to collapse. <laughs> it's 3 a.m. <laughs> and uh, I think Jack is like, in he was in Asia. Now he's in Europe. Yeah, so he's back in he's Europe. He's like, worldwide or whatever. Mm-hmm. So, but he's living his best life. So, I think um, <clears throat> I don't know. Yeah, I think it's been it's been good collaborating with them. Jack and I have have pretty good and similar tastes and what we like so does inu and so uh it's really easy for us to really just synchronize uh what we're thinking for the script and for the series um but yeah i don't there's no no struggles if there's any struggles working with this with a team um y- you would not be able to serialize weekly <laughs> that is true mm, right that is true. Yeah. now i know you said um you know you have a lot of other things you're doing and um you was pitching some stuff to webtoons i do remember one thing that you were kind of 
trying to pitch and i don't know if you can answer that if this is something that is currently in the works or not but it was like a futuristic dodgeball series if i if i, oh, I didn't i didn't pitch that but i have uh so i did i did a futuristic dodgeball series mm-hmm. with um my friend jose who's um he is doing another series with me for webtoon okay. that's already been yep. announced so the dodgeball series we did for shonen jump tezuka which was mm-hmm. like um I want to say 2020. Mm-hmm. Um, you can actually read that. It's free. It's just a one shot. It's just like future. It's just dodgeball with power ups and changing terrains and exosuits, and they're mm-hmm. doing crazy things. And it's shown in underground dodgeball, which is pretty fun. I want. I do want to take that to a to series one day. That'd be mm-hmm. so cool because I think I just think dodgeball is such a cool thing. After you, if you've seen like the the movie, I was like, wow, they just yeah. like made that so dramatic. I was like, okay, what if we like anime vibe this thing up? You know, that'd be even cooler. Um, but yeah, we're doing uh, another series called Samurai no Tora for Webtoon, which is um, it's another futuristic sports series, except it's about uh, samurai dueling in urban cities. So it's like um, you're on a train, for example and um two samurai athletes samurai dueling is a sport so Mm -hmm. two samurai uh, athletes decide to challenge each other on the train Mm -hmm. then like all the the, boom it's like cameras coming out of the ceiling they start they start recording people are all hyped up because it's the number number one sport in the world and they just fight in public places Mm -hmm. and it's broadcast to the world um and that's what that series or the topic of that series is about um okay but yeah we use we use dodge but the dodgeball series is like a it's like a testing ground for futuristic sports okay yeah I, I definitely wouldn't mind um the dodgeball one or even the um the one you were just saying samurai no tour because webtoons doesn't really have a lot of sports series which is which is yeah, crazy it it really don't have barely any and i'm like why <laughs> like no does nobody yeah. like sports <laughs> like what's what's wrong so i'm definitely glad you're yeah they're, they're definitely sleeping on it it's interesting because one of their top series is windbreaker right which is a, a i love when biking series you mm-hmm. know and it's like so it's like a sports series that does really well boxer also yeah, another the boxer. Um, sports series i'm like so i think people people like sports series and and the Just crossover between the anime the crossover between the anime and webtoon space is so and manga space is so like prominent like mm-hmm. and because like sports series like i don't know kuroko no basket haikyuu etc are so popular those ips mm-hmm. um like it's pretty easy sell to be like yeah you know, the sports series would do really well i think a lot of people though it's it's kind of it's it's definitely it's definitely hard to write sports series because it's not just the action. You have, well, first off, you have to make something that's not boring, but like, <laughs> mm. I don't know. You have to make something that's like more not as intense, but you make it be super intense. And then you also have to include like the characters' lives and stuff because all, all sports series are somewhat slice of life series as well. That's true. So. Yeah. The exaggeration has to be there uh-huh. because if it's just really like, like a baseball series like like and it's just kind of boring so the exaggeration comes in with like the bigger homers the bigger hits the speed and like adding yeah. kind of like like you said power-ups to will make it more interesting because no one's going to want to read just like a baseball series like yeah you gotta yes yeah, spice, yeah, spice, yeah, spice it up yeah, yeah spice it up. but i do think um speaking of baseball i do think that's one series and which is my all-time favorite sports series is um ace of diamonds i think they do a really good job because it's really no power-ups with it um it's pretty much kind of grounded but they just kind of make it seem like certain moves and pitches um or more power-ups when it's really not yeah yeah they do that with high q too mm-hmm. i mean high q is like they just exaggerate the scene like where um the setter is automatically sh- like setting the ball to mm. the exact point where the main character is spiking like and they have like a target symbol like that's not real right right so it's like they just like they just exaggerate it all i think that's all stuff that could happen on webtoon i think that's um something that we're trying to bring um i didn't want to go too out there because i was like I, so basically we created a whole new sport so mm. we're just like yeah we'll just see how this goes but yeah, I think it's gonna be yeah. everybody loves go. fighting so. yeah everybody loves fighting 
<laughs> exactly. Yeah, I was like, oh, how can we do something like it's like the boxer or whatever? Mm. I want to do an MMA series really badly um, because I I like the boxer. I like Hajime no Ippo. I like Hinomoro Sumo. I think it's a sumo series. I just like think an MMA series would be so cool. But yeah, there's been see. a there's been a couple MMA series that just released. Um, Tomato Can, I think yeah. that's one, and then uh, King of Octagon. I think that was the name of it. Or King of the yeah, Octagon. they have a ton, yeah, they have a ton of series. They have a ton of fighting like fighting mm-hmm. Korean series that are just launching. There's always there's always the street fighting ones because they just love. I don't know. Something's wrong with the bullying in Korea because they're yeah <laughs> something right. They're crazy. They something, they're dude. crazy. They're lighting schools on fire at age 14. I'm like, this, right. is, this sounds like anarchy. Like, I don't know what's going on. Right. Because, <laughs> like, prime example, I'm currently um, reading Week Hero on the channel. And, like, they're uh, just yeah. having these school brawl fights. And I'm like, where is everybody? These, like, empty streets, broad day. Like, I'm like, nobody walks a dog. That's the same. Nobody That's the same goes to the grocery it. store. Like, where is where where are the adults in this series? I know they're just smashing bricks on people's heads at age fifteen or however old this kid is. I'm right. like, all right, that's, <laughs> that's great. It's like that, and also like I think there's one called Teenage Mercenary. Yep. And it's like mm. you're like this fifteen to sixteen year old kid that looks like he's twenty seven and also has killed like two hundred <laughs> people. I'm like, what is going on? It's kind of funny. Crazy. Yeah. Oh, the craziness. So, um, how is it working on? multiple projects all at once <clears throat> yeah i think um i think one thing that is my competitive advantage as an author is that i can jump between ideas pretty easily mm-hmm. so <clears throat> good examples like yesterday i wrote like a manga script in the am and then that afternoon i switched over to just a goblin wrote just the goblins next script and then i switched over wrote another script for another series <laughs> So I'm able to write multiple series per day without like having to break my flow. Whereas a lot of authors um, even struggle to write one series, but let alone like if they were to do two, like they would break. It takes some time to get into the groove and just like, yeah, you know, I don't know, like uh, just get get writing. You know, I think a lot of authors struggle with that, like putting words on paper. Mm-hmm. And for me, it's like so like. I don't know. It's just very easy um, because I came from novel writing. And so I used to write, um, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of words mm-hmm. um, direct to reader. Right. But now it's like I don't write direct to reader. I write direct to my artist who then turns it into something that I can we can look at. Right. So mm-hmm. um, it's just a lot easier for me because I came from the novel writing side. And then I also understand like the manga stuff the manga side because i also wrote for for manga mm-hmm. um and so i think writing multiple series for me has been easier than what most people would perceive it as um i think i could the only thing i could do that would make it more efficient is if i batched my writing so instead of writing three different series in one mm-hmm. day if i just wrote one series and i wrote like five episodes of that in that same day that would be so much better um anytime i think that i'm not i i'm writing like two what i I, what's it called i just know that i don't write enough because jack writes like three times the amount i write so jack jack is a machine i don't know how he does it i I know if i ever think i'm writing like too much Mm -hmm. it's like i'm not because jack is literally like 2x my output so he's insane man that's crazy. It's whatever. I have no idea. I just, I just am in awe. Nah, but it's that, still man. big. It's still big props to you, bro, because you do so many different series and like. So how does that work? Like for ideas, whenever you have for your series, like how do you know which idea you want to put in which series, or like how do you discern? Yeah, it, right? yeah. I think. Oh man, I just so I have this like what's it called? I have this document that's like a pitch document, and it just has like every every time I have an idea that's cool. Mm-hmm. And usually my coolest ideas come when I travel. So like last year I traveled every month just to get cooler ideas. Mm-hmm. So sorry. Oh, it's all good. It's all good. We, all, we, all get, we all get Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what was I saying? Um I was saying how you um, oh, that's, that's how you go and travel um each every time. Oh you yeah, travel, so I was traveling yeah, I was traveling every uh every month last year to get better ideas for my writing. Mm-hmm. 
and also like just writing remotely um and i have this document i just like put all the the idea the cool ideas on there and then whenever someone's like yo you want to pitch um i just rip ideas out of this pitch document and then i sit down and i'll flesh it out so um because you can't force out ide- I, good ideas i don't think it's like you can't just force those out of you you can't you know it's not like taking a poop you know it's just like it's like those are things that just come naturally to you as you like live your life mm. i'm i'm convinced of that and then what you can the only thing you can do is take those concepts that are really good and um and flesh those out and those are things that just like take time so you can just sit down and just do that like at a coffee shop and that's fine but like the good ideas like the raw concepts like the guy who created like death note mm. definitely that did not he did not just sit down and just be like idea come to me you know it was just like he was just like living living watching stuff reading stuff and then one day it was just like boom in his brain and then he was just like cool so yeah, exactly. that's how i come up with i don't know how anybody would come up with that yeah <laughs> that's, that's wild some ideas are so wild i have no idea how people come up with it <clears throat> yeah they're getting crazier i just saw this anime called o- oishinoko yesterday i've been hearing and about that how how is that i dude, i haven't decided if i'm gonna watch it but i've been hearing so many people dude talk it about is it. it is like the next death my friend was like yo it's the next death note and i was like what is happening because it's about a uh, it's about like a like a like a like a pop star mm-hmm. and like a, she's like a pop star that gets pregnant with twins and i'm like where is this going and then it turns into like an isekai series and then it turns into like a death note series and i'm like <laughs> what is going on like it's all in one episode i'm like i'm literally all over the place it's doing really well it's number one on my anime list right now mm-hmm. above full metal alchemist it won't stay up there forever everyone's got to calm down but like um i don't know it's just like super it's a very different take on the reincarnation genre that I just did not see coming. Um, I don't know. I think it's interesting. Like the the pop star stuff, the pop star oh, what's world. What's interesting is you just said Full Metal Alchemist is number one for you. Is that is, what? Oh no, sorry. That's that's like the the ratings on my anime list. Oh. Like the overall rankings. Like that's not my rating, but that's like okay. how everyone that rates anime. Full Metal Alchemist is no, has always been number one, right? And then sometimes, like, a series will overtake it because mm-hmm. it's really popular in the moment. But what ends up happening is because Brotherhood is like a classic, right? Um, it always right. goes back up there. So, <clears throat> Definitely. so how? If you can't answer, how many series are you currently working on? Um. So I have god game bandit king bandit king's closing out so that'll be done soon mad gate is green light for season two but after that i don't know if i'm doing any more so it might be like so those are three at voice at voice and then there's webtoon i'm doing two um i can't say anything else but there's more so i can't i, I can't say anything else but um, so that's four. There was a canvas series that I was doing for a, for a, a board game company. So a board game company that mm-hmm. was like, so the creator of Arcane League of Legends, which is like mm-hmm. a the Netflix TV show, um, left to to create her own um, company for board games, mm-hmm. and so she brought me on to um, create the webtoon series for that. So that's like five um it's probably five five right now five that i can talk about and then uh it'll be or i guess like six because it's like the two, samurai tour just a goblin mm-hmm. plus the those three plus the board game series that's six that's six plus like unannounced a mystery a mystery a mystery let's say a mystery five okay <clears throat> Plus a mystery. Another five mystery. <laughs> wow. <laughs> let's say a mystery five. Let's say mystery six. Honestly, let's let's put it at mystery six. six. Okay. So how do you how do you juggle it? Like how I like how do you decide which day you're gonna write which series and? Um, I have a project manager that just like is like, yo, you got this things do. Mm-hmm. Um, you need to do this now, and then they pester me. They're like, Brandon, you're late. <laughs> I'm like, crap. <laughs> I'm like, you know like it's it's tough like ideally i would have a lot more chapters done Mm -hmm. ahead of certain series like god like god game i'm way ahead of that series i've written like 10 chapters ahead just the goblin i'm probably like two Mm -hmm. like i'm i'm like not doing so hot on that one i could just i should just sit down and just iron that out 
mad gay i'm like five mm. um so i can and then the other one the canvas series i'm like it's called Kinfire. It's a yeah. uh, it's on Webtoon Canvas. Yeah, I did a video. Um, I'm I'm probably like three, mm. so I think uh yeah, I think I'm I, I I I try and write ahead, but I could do better. But um yeah, I have someone who just like pastures me pretty much. Mm-hmm. We all need that one person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean I need to know what my schedule is kind of because like it, the the the. I, I just want to focus on the things I have to do, which are just write, you know, and then right. write and then review art and give art direction thoughts. So what's this, the story behind the uh, inspired author, like the the name? Um, me? Oh, um, oh, man, I think I made it when I was 14 again. This is mm-hmm. like all... all uh, 14 like, was the age, now I, like, 14 was the age. Now I, now I twist it like... Because well, because I was in all, because I was at the time deriving inspiration from all these projects. Like mm-hmm. my first novel was like heavy inspired by Naruto and Bleach, and um, that was the Swordsman novel, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's called the Age of Darkness. Don't look it up because it's. <laughs> I published it when I was seventeen. Like it was an old. I was so young. Um, and but yeah, I think uh, the the this, this, the story behind inspired author is like I was inspired very heavily um by all these authors and so i i I use them to to bring myself up and i i mean i'm a firm believer of like there's original ideas but all those original ideas came from something else that Mm -hmm. inspired you and uh obviously now what i try and do in the position that i'm in is i'm still taking inspiration from the greats and then i try and inspire um other people um that are looking to do what i do um kind of in the space and that's kind of like it's inspired and then you inspire mm-hmm. is what mm-hmm. what i try and do now but yeah can you give a um can you talk about how your journey from you know 14 flipping coins and how you got to where you are now yeah 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 so story time i started off uh I think I got my first manga when I was like really young. I was like six or seven. Mm-hmm. Um, it was also the first pair of boobies I ever saw because uh, it was Dragon Ball Volume One. Mm-hmm. And if you don't remember, Bulma yeah, is Bulma. <laughs> Bulma's like naked. And I yeah. was like, my mom was like, "Yeah, Dragon Ball. Like this would be so good. Get it from the library." And I was like, "What is going on?" Um, but yeah, that sparked my love for. Um, uh anime and manga <laughs> and so basically i started getting into anime and manga um and started to draw um i was i was also just like writing like fan fictions because I, I was playing video games I, w- I would write like fan fictions of the video games i would write this one fan fiction where i was uh, the main character and i was crossing over into it was kind of like kingdom hearts where you cross over into all these anime worlds mm-hmm. of course that's not legal to write that but yeah. i was a fan fiction that would have been so was, dope, though. yeah and i was 10 so <laughs> i'm sure i'll get the pass but um <clears throat> yeah so I, I was doing that for most of my like younger years and then you know building up to eventually uh i was 14 made a decision whether or not to to be a writer or an artist flipped a coin became a writer quit my art career I had an art Instagram at the time, so I just like mm-hmm. stopped using that. It's crazy. Um, and then focused on writing a novel. So I wrote my novel from 14 to 17, published at 17, um, kept doing novels, went to college at NYU, was still writing novels through college, uh, like about one a year mm-hmm. at, the, at the rate I was going. Um, and these were all like fantasy novels. Um, and then uh, I got, I, I got a, opportunity to write for a western comic company Mm -hmm. um and so i did like this is like traditional american comics so that was the first time i realized hey i don't need to 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 create visuals um i can write scripts i don't need to be able to draw Mm -hmm. and so um that like changed me so i was like okay like this american project is like cool but like i want to do like manga right so i shifted my focus to creating uh traditional manga um and uh i was just entering manga competitions in japan for a long time um eventually got traction with this large prod this large one shot called icarus rising Mm -hmm. um 
we're doing actually a ser- the same duo. We're oh, the same duo. So Icarus Rising and Dodge were both series that I both one shots that I submitted to Shonen Jump, and both of them, both of those teams are also uh, greenlit for Webtoon Originals, which is very exciting. Um, but yeah, basically what ended up happening was uh, this was like during the TikTok boom, like during the pandemic. So when I entered Shonen Jump Tezuka, I was posting my process online, and all that stuff just blew up. So. Mm-hmm. Um, what ended up happening was uh, I got a bunch of offers from a bunch of publishers, Webtoon included, mm-hmm. um, from the work that I did on Shonen Jump Tezuka and from the following that I was building as I was doing all these manga projects and novel projects. Um, at the time, I was also working as a finance bro. So I was a finance bro. And that's why... Uh, I'm pretty decent like in terms of like business stuff because mm-hmm. of my experience in finance and tech. And so when I used to have this crazy schedule, I used to work from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. on the finance stuff. And then I used to write from 8 p.m. to like one wow. <laughs> uh, every single day and then work every weekend. I would just write from like eight, like 10 a.m. maybe to like 10 p.m. or like 1 a.m. even um and just work um so that was like for two years i just did that um and uh eventually you know was able to to make the shift from the finance bro life to just writing all day and now i'm here i think it was uh it was probably god game that gave me like my first experience with serialized webtoons and then what ended up happening was um after realizing that i can serialize a lot of publishers were down to to take more chances on me um and now they can see that i write for so many different series they're like okay brandon can (laughs) write a lot he can handle it (laughs) he can handle the heat um which is good so that's the long story but basically I entered a competition, posted my process about it after publishing on my own for five plus years, mm-hmm. writing and drawing for myself for 10 plus years before that. And then big break, took advantage, here I am. Hey, that's that's great. That's great. I, lo- I love hearing success stories. Yeah, it's a, it's a long process. I think some people might think it's like, you know, it's funny when people are like, it's impossible for anyone to ever look at this career mm-hmm. or like any career in webtoons or manga and be like that's overnight success because it's impossible if you're serialized it's literally impossible right. <laughs> like yeah so yeah it, it definitely took like i don't know i would say like 15 years of just creating stuff to get to this point but um yeah i don't know i'm like almost 26 so i'm pretty young and still have a lot of energy in me so Get it all while you're young, man. Get it all while you're young. Oh, so do you still, like, from here, from time to time, do you still draw at all? Like, your art? I don't draw. I don't draw. I don't draw anymore. I, like, uh, at all? I, I even just be like... I don't draw. I haven't... Dr- I, I, oh, oh, I used to storyboard for... So, for manga projects on mm-hmm. print, like, because manga... Um, because manga you have to panel the project and so when you write the script like you're drawing on you're drawing on a you're you're laying your out the panels on a page mm-hmm. and so when you write on a script it's really hard to understand what that all looks like and so what i would do is i would storyboard really roughly if you guys have ever seen bakuman mm-hmm. you would understand how really rough this this uh storyboard is but i would storyboard it out and uh just give it to the artist just so that they can see a rough outline of what the panel layout is and also the panel composition and also like roughly what I'm envisioning for the um what's going into the panels itself but and then they make it prettier so Bakuman that's one underrated series I feel I feel that that one doesn't get enough love Bakuman is Bakuman is amazing I have uh my laptop has the Bakuman I have a sticker just like of the Mm -hmm. The, the main character drawing um yeah that's that's one of my favorite series ever mine too is it's crazy it's crazy how good that series is but speaking of even crazier series how has the reception of just a goblin been since release and post launch how how has that reception been i think it's been really positive i think people are 
we try to strike the balance between something that feels familiar yet very refreshing in the mm-hmm. genre. So what's very familiar is the system fantasy stuff, the mm-hmm. isekai vibes, the you know, the the adventures and monsters, <clears throat> power leveling stuff. I think the new version that we tried to strike is like okay we're taking it from the monster's perspective which has been done mm-hmm. but we're trying to do it from a really intelligent monster that's going undercover as a human and ultimately is trying to like solve this kind of like race wars between the adventurers and the monsters right mm-hmm. um and so yeah i think it's part of it's the part of it's the concept and then part of it's also the fact that inu is just a demon he just is mm-hmm. going super hard on these panels especially the most recent chapter like we just went like the reception has been insane because the action is just getting better and better every chapter mm-hmm. um and uh yeah i, I just think it's yeah, it uh been crazy yeah i just think it stands i think it stands out on a on a on an artistic level in terms of like hey the style feels very different from all the korean manhwa stuff that you might find out there because mm-hmm. it's it's closer like a to like a manga style like mm-hmm. what you might find from like dragon quest dragon or Ball. like Horiyama or something mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um and then we also like tie in like kind of a western vibe into it as well so that it feels just like different from the other from the from the korean uh series that that are doing uh system fantasy mm-hmm. <clears throat> I definitely, I can definitely agree with that. Agree with that take. So, um, what which character in Just a Goblin is your favorite right now, or that you've written so far? Is it a character we've seen? Is it a character that hasn't appeared yet? Which one yeah. is your favorite? Which one? <laughs> I okay. Everyone hates this character called Tyros, who's like this. <laughs> Tyros is like this, this big like hothead kid who. Mm is supposed to be the main character of the like if this wasn't a typical manhwa mm, webtoon right. he's the he's the mc right, right. he's I like i don't understand the hate for tyros jo- bro i don't <laughs> i don't i i don't either i kind of understand well be- because we wrote him so like he hates goblins right mm-hmm. or he hates monsters and monsters are like are like not, not they're not good but they're mm-hmm. not bad in this series either right because you're looking from the monster pov mm-hmm and so it's it's we're, what we're what we're trying to do is do the commentary on like how <laughs> how all these MCs are just like slaughtering monsters in their in their series, like power leveling like wow I need exp mm-hmm. and like soul leveling and stuff and they're just like slaughtering everyone and then uh, the Tyros is the same way he's arguably has more of a reason to wanting to kill these monsters because like uh, if. Uh, I can't spoil anything because the fast pass stuff, mm-hmm. but his sto- backstory is tied to monsters, right? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and so, because of his backstory, you know, a lot, of, a lot of like I don't know, like like stories, like fantasy stories, like or isekai stories, like don't have main characters that are killing monsters for the right reasons. Tyros has a good reason, and uh, he's kind of obsessed with it, and he's a super shonen protagonist. And it's I don't know, it's just super fun to write him because he's just so like. Pat, like driven by passion and just so like fire like his his emotions correlate with his power you know mm. so it's like really fun to write him because he gets so emotional um and he does all the shonen the 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 corny shonen lines um mm. you know like i'm gonna protect my friends and all that stuff um so he's the one where i get to project all the favorite shonen craziness on onto but um yeah, it's probably him or Gubble, probably, because Gubble is just cute and right. funny and goofy, and she's like the. But also, we wanted to write her as like, hey, that's like the outside, like, hey, she's really cute and funny and stuff. But also, she's like a very loyal, loyal friend um, to the main character Nog. So, mm. yeah, I think uh, the cast is pretty good, but um, yeah, I don't know. Tyrus is probably my favorite. Everyone hates him, for their, for, I, it makes sense. They hate him, but uh. You know, I, I just think his character is so, so it, what we have planned for him is so good. So, I, I just love how the haters switch because if it was in Tyro's um, POV, then everyone would love him. But just because we're looking through Nog, everybody hates him. Yeah, that's exactly. That's exa- we actually literally we wrote him exactly how we would have if the series was surrounding Tyros. Like mm-hmm. he's literally the main character. He's on the he's on the banner. He's on the cover. It's. Mm-hmm. It's just Nog and Tyros, right? It's because 
um in any other series like nog would be the side character mm. right so i just find it hilarious i just don't understand the hate I still don't get it. man it's, it's just because you know pe- people gotta hate on something it wouldn't be right if somebody just didn't hate something it's okay it's okay tyros i mean tyros he's killing monsters i'm surprised they aren't giving goliath who's the right guy. that's what i was gonna say right. give goliath the hate especially since he's like sneaky he's like this big sneaky brood because he's like watching <laughs> yeah and, and he hates goblins here. more than anyone he's the goblin slayer like yeah. you know it's just it's just he's the and guy he's totally so keeping an eye on nog because he feels something's up he's like what's up with this yeah dude? like he knows something yeah, I think, is up i think it's because we write tyros kind of like he's like an in between he's like an anti-hero it's like mm-hmm. he's in between he's in between like being a hero and being like a villain and but everyone just hates you know, goliath is just straight up like bad right he's mm-hmm. just like we hate this guy okay right. like fine. Yeah, from the start he was giving him crap bro <laughs> right <laughs> like yeah. hate him not the one who brought him into the fold and it's like <laughs> cool with him and speaking with him and helping him out helping him along their journey yeah yeah i think the good part about this series yeah i think the good thing about this series right now is that there's just like it doesn't feel <clears throat> well there's good guys and bad guys but just as you just don't know who you're rooting for on all these fights like mm-hmm. the most recent episode has gobble fighting like an orc and mm-hmm. they're just like clobbering each other to oblivion and you just don't know who you're rooting for and even gobble doesn't even know who she's rooting for <laughs> so she's just she's just like fighting and she's like i don't know why i'm fighting you and it's kind of terrible and i need to find my resolve for wanting to fight you you know right. um right. so yeah i kind of had that issue because i when i read that um it was, i read it when it was a fast pass chapter but when i read it, i was like man who do i root for in this situation because i kind of don't want neither <laughs> one of them to lose right but it's like yeah of course somebody has to lose yeah it's tough it's tough i think it's good i think it's good it's interesting i think it's interesting how much empathy the readers have this is more empathy than i would have anticipated Mm -hmm. the empathy that they have for like the bad guys in this situation um the orcs Mm -hmm. is insane like i'm I'm like I didn't even write like this character a backstory. She just is talking and like mm-hmm. talking a little bit about like how she feels and her philosophy about like you know whatever. And everyone just like I'm on their team. <laughs> I hate humans. <laughs> I'm like oh my oh my god. You know that was un- that was something I didn't anticipate at all. I guess you got to write those backstories now. Yeah, well, that'll make them <laughs> like them too much. It's like now, now, it's now I'm gonna hurt too many feelings if I kill someone. You know, it's uh, it's tough. <laughs> but but it'll it'll just make it that much more enjoyable. You know, everybody hated it when Neji yeah. died and when Itachi died and all of these other characters that are fan favorites just kicked the bucket. So you know, it just makes it that much more enjoyable. True, it's true. That's crazy. This gobble shot me. Like I knew, we all knew about her strength, but until, up until this fight, we didn't really know like her skill in fighting, right? Like she actually, is yeah, a real fighter. Yeah, she's 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 boxing with. Yeah, they were they were going crazy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I right, completely caught me off guard. All right, so, um, do you have out of all the series you you're currently writing that or that you have written out, um? Do you have any of them planned to the very end? Like, do you have like an idea of where you at least want to get to? Oh, I think it's tough because like you only get greenlit seasons at a time. So it's hard to ever plan for a full on ending. (laughs) Even for just a goblin, it's like you don't know like if you're going to get another 50 episode season or Mm. if you have to end it like asap rocky you know it's like <laughs> so it's tough i think the series that i that i definitely have because i know that because god game is the biggest series on their platform so i imagine like they'll keep it going they'll want mm-hmm. to keep it going so that's the series that i have an idea of how that ends just a goblin i have an idea of how it ends because when you pitch you have to give a rough idea of how it ends mm-hmm. um but like it would it would need like a lot of it would need to be god of high school level to reach that 
point mm. of what the ultimate goal would be. Whoa. Okay. Yeah, like a lot of like 200 chapters, probably like crazy chapters. Um, but um, you know, assuming you, you never know if you're gonna get you know axed at any point. So if it does get you know, if you have to be also be planned for like okay, like if it does get axed after X season, like what is the contingency plan? How do I wrap this up in a way that doesn't feel like too forced Mm -hmm. so that's i think that's always the battle that serialized writers have because you never know when when you have to kind of like end the series almost which is Mm -hmm. tough um have you had have you ever had series get x x before no i've had oh i've had um I've had series that I have personally decided to end early. So like Bandit King is a series that I've decided to end early, mm-hmm. um, which will be ending after this next, uh, after this next arc, I'm going to finish it and just like take like a, either a long hiatus or just like stop doing it just because I'm working on a lot of things. I also think when I started Bandit King, like <clears throat> it was from a different, yeah, I just think it was, I just think it was from a different, like, skill of writing it's a different level and now i can just do something else um so yeah i've, I've axed my own stuff if that was the <laughs> <laughs> well yeah I, I guess it's always to you know you rather take it out take a series out with your own hands rather than being forced to by um the yeah publisher. yeah exactly exactly i think it's i think um i've had like an, a, a game axed before so like i i've also done like atome games just like shoujo style like anime girl games Mm -hmm. um and so a publisher like would commission that and so i've had this series that was like kind of like memes it was like literally just like memes meme this meme game where you're like omnipotent this omnipotent like anime girl at like Mm -hmm. a high school and you can like the choices you can make are like so out of pocket like you can like stab your teacher with a pencil or something like it's crazy (laughs) (laughs) you can do whatever you want so basically like it's like and so that got axed probably because of like brand stuff which makes mm-hmm. sense so i was like yeah you know it's it was a little too crazy so mm-hmm. hey. i thought it was funny that they let that happen to, to me <laughs> that is, honestly. yeah that that is wild because um i played a couple of those games and i just the amount of stuff that i know that has to go into each one like the different variables uh, all right so if somebody clicks this this happens how this will lead to this yeah and just i know those games are just incredibly hard to make uh, they're not that hard they're not that i mean maybe I'm, I'm not that good at them at making mm-hmm. them yet so maybe i am not the <laughs> one to talk i'm better at webtoons and manga so all right so i have a i have a question um since since you yep. have dabbled in the game space and of course you're um your author as well which one would you rather have just a goblin turn into? Would you rather a just a goblin action RPG video game, like full on console release, PC, all of that stuff, or would you rather an anime first? Just on which one would you rather happen first? Oh, which one first? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> damn. A full on like like a like a triple A game RPG. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, triple A oh. RPG. Action Good budget. RPG. Yeah, good, like good budget. budget. We're talking like Harry Potter, Legacy. Yeah, Harry like, Potter, yeah. Legacy, God of War, Elden Ring, Elden Ring all of that. Oh Last God. of Us, all of that stuff. Honestly, I think it depends on who's doing the animation. Mm-hmm. I think, oh man, that's tough because I think ga- I think the game industry is like big, the biggest in, in the entertainment space. It's going to yeah. be the biggest in the entertainment space. It kind of is out. already. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, I think that. So I think. And the amount of time people could put into that but my dream is an anime so right. i don't know i would probably say i would probably say an anime but it would depend on the animation studio behind it mm-hmm. you know if it's like if you're giving me you foldable like sure you know like yeah. we're good production so that, idea that'd great. Be your number one yeah. pick right there you foldable studio no budget um no probably like it's probably wit studio wit? honestly oh, wit? Wit, studio. Sick. Okay. wit studio has 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 put out insane work right mm-hmm. attack on time season one two three they did rank the ranking of king's art style would do so the animation style would do so well with just mm-hmm. a goblin you know mm-hmm. so <clears throat> i think studio wit would do really good okay. Ufotable's, Ufotable does really nice obviously really good um good work as well 
whoever else did the fade, someone else did the fade. I think uh, I think it was production IG. Yeah, yeah production IG. Fade, some, fade the movie. Mm. Oh my god, dude, that was insane. My favorite um, um fade series was Unlimited Blade Works. That was my absolute favorite. Yeah, that was OG. That was OG. Brave Shine opening, mm-hmm. pretty good. Great. <laughs> yeah, I would say like yeah. If it's like a if it's like an unknown studio though, mm-hmm. then I would be like, give me a, give me a give me a crazy game. Like, right. I think a game right. would be so fun, but it would be like so like. I don't know. Which would company would you want to do the game? Mm, that's a good Which one company would I want to do the game? Dev or publisher it doesn't matter. I don't. I don't. I don't. I'm not positive. I'm not positive. Who's done? That's a good. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't want to say like, like the guys who are doing like. I could see it kind of being like a Hoyoverse type game where it's like, well, because like Hoyoverse does like anime games really well, Mm -hmm. and like they make a lot of money. (laughs) Mm -hmm. But um, but um, I part of me is also like. I don't know, because Genshin Impact did really well, right? Genshin yeah. Impact did super well. Um, and for an anime game, I don't know. Like, who else does anime games really well? Uh, the guys who I did Naruto Storm, but they yeah, don't Cyber do RPGs. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like I like the Storm games. But I think, um, I think I like a Goblin go- would, would be good as an arena fighter <laughs> as well. Yeah, I, I also like... Um, I don't know. I think some, something like... Because it's interesting because Just a Goblin doesn't match the style, but like w- what they're doing at like the was Santa Monica studio with yes, God of War, like, mm-hmm. like that studio was crazy. What they did with The Last of Us, so crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously different, different games, but like, I don't know. I don't know. Wait, maybe, so, maybe, 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 huh? maybe Blizzard we'll could it. do something, something Blizzard. good. I don't know. Blizzard, that's an interesting choice, especially with just because I like, just because I think that Blizzard does really good. I think Blizzard does really good with like characters, characters Mm. like getting you like Overwatch, how you how they draw you into their characters, Mm. really good. Even Riot Games, how they bring you into characters, really good. But none of these guys will do anything outside of their IP. They would never do adaptation work, so it doesn't. This is just a pipe dream. Yeah, of course, of course. Well, that's what we're here for, pipe dreams. You know, put it out there, (laughs) see what happens. Never know. Never know. Hell yeah. That'd be freaking awesome though. <laughs> I, I agree. I it would be no. awesome. Because the system systems fit so well in games. Even like having like Square do it, because they do a lot of RPGs, right? So. Yeah, I mean solo leveling's getting a getting a game, isn't it? Yeah, the um mobile game. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, is I, it mobile? I thought yes, it was a boss nah, I I wish. It, it's a mobile, mobile PC. Damn, gotcha. You know, you know how to so do many it. mobile games, yeah, I'm right? It's, it's <laughs> easier to monetize and do all that and yep. the residual money, exactly. So, horrible, yeah, horrible. And then everybody, I mean, it's more accessibility to at that point, right? Like, everybody has a phone, everybody has a yeah, phone, true. some has two phones, mobile, bro. So, the mobile gaming space is, is, is insane. How it much is, yeah. money flows through that space, arguably. I'm a victim because I straight up was like, I need to take more breaks. So mm-hmm. over Christmas and I was like, I gotta take more breaks. So I took two days off. Mm-hmm. If you didn't know, I work almost every week, every day of the week and every day of every day. But um, I took two days off for Christmas. Mm-hmm. And during those two days, I was so bored. So I was like, <laughs> I'm not working. Like, what do I freaking do? Like spend time with my family? Like, that's crazy. So I yeah, downloaded uh, mobile <laughs> games. <laughs> on my phone mm-hmm. and i just ended up spending money i was just like i'm never gonna play this again but like this bo- this beginner pack sounds pretty enticing yep. they, they're giving me like <laughs> a de- they're giving me a deal because they're crossing off an imaginary number for digital goods so mm-hmm. i might as well spend this money for a oh. good deal on something that costs them I was zero i was a victim of that i i had to i literally deleted every mobile game off my phone because i was i was a victim i fell victim Oh yeah, bro. I'm ashamed to admit. Oh it. man, <laughs> when I was playing a, uh, I was playing that hardcore leveling warrior freaking game. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Hardcore leveling warrior has a game. Like yeah, that? yeah. Har- hardcore yeah, level warrior me. has one. Windbreaker has one. Lookism has one. Of course, Tower of God has one. God of High School has one. Um, Noblis has what? one. Yeah, it's 
pretty much damn near oh, every yeah. major Navy series has a mobile game. Majority of them That's are Korean crazy. based only. Yeah, don't but, even give me a to you know, more. If you have an Android, you can get to them easy. But <laughs> they they definitely have games. Yo. That's crazy. I I was gonna look that up and I was like, wait, I'm literally talking to you guys right now. Like, That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, they definitely have. Um, I'll go are, later. are you look are you excited for any of the webtoon anime adaptation that's coming out? I know of course everybody's excited for solo leveling, Returner's Magic should be special, just got announced. Yeah. Supposed to come out this year, Tower of God season two. Yeah, that one. Lucid oh my Adventure. God, that looks that looks the art looks pretty good on that. As, yeah. as it's expected. good too. It's a, it's a really good Funny, game. Hardcore Leveling Warrior did a fan art of uh, just a goblin. Actually. I, yes. I saw that. It's very saw exciting. That. That's wow. exciting for us. Yeah. But, um, and I I love his um new series, X and Ash. I love that series. Damn. Yeah. I, I think um what, what was your question again? It was um Oh, um are you if I, anime webtoon adaptations? Yeah, are um, you excited <clears> about <throat> any of them that are coming out? I liked Tower of God. So Tower of God season two. Mm. I'm curious what they're gonna do with that. I just hope they have enough episodes. I do not want them to so, cram that. Yeah, right. I feel like I feel like it's tough because like they definitely when they green light these things, they definitely cram webtoon episodes into an anime season. I do think what I think what I've been seeing from the Crunchyroll Originals anime team has always been like we I don't know. They try and adapt like let's say twelve episodes, eleven episodes, a hundred ep- a hundred webtoon episodes, roughly. Crazy. I think that's double the amount. I think it should be one webtoon season, which is um, I don't know. Let's say fifty episodes mm-hmm. should yeah, be right, equivalent right. to um, to like a season. A, a season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, there is ten or twelve episodes, but yeah, because that's what they did with uh with God of High School. They oh, they way too many. yeah first God of High School. God they High skipped School like crazy. the first twenty chapters, I think, and then they started terrible. And then they they was like, okay. For the next 110, we're going to cram them all into the rest of this episode. So I'm like, why? And yeah. I hope they don't do that with Tower yeah. God because they lucked up because the story of Tower God is so lore based and deep starting off that they was able to get away with it for season one. Well, if they do it for season two, it's going to fail. Yeah. Agreed. So I, it's tough. It's tough. I've, <clears throat> I've seen some of their... Um, uh, have I seen some of their live action stuff? Like Sweet Home was okay, you know, mm. like stuff like that. Yeah, Sweet Home was actually So, good. so I, I uh, same with the other one. All of us are dead. Like they've done. I think some that good was ones. their best one thus far. All of us <laughs> are dead. They've done some good ones for the live action side. So, so I don't know. I, I think it's definitely possible for the animation side. I think soul leveling. Here's the thing. <clears throat> the trailer didn't impress me, mm. but they have my favorite composer on the music so i don't maybe i'll just watch it and just close my eyes you know and see what happens but i think uh, uh you know if they have any if if, if they, all they got to do is give the animations so, like the action just has to be fluent and that's all they need mm. they don't need anything else you know yeah it just has to be fluent fighting scenes that's that's what they need to make this thing successful so if they can't do that then then yikes but they could afford Hiroyuki Sawano on the music so I'm assuming they have some budget unless they spend it on music which they, makes no sense to me so they from everything I've been told and heard about it um they do have a good size budget um they pretty much have the Sayo budget um cause A1's doing it so they pretty much have a Sayo budget so I'm not really worried about budget it's just because the whole Crunchyroll original thing I'm just I don't know if they're going to try to cram it from what I've been told. They're not going to cram it. It's going to, they're actually going to give it proper treatment and, you know, yeah. um, I, and it's supposed to stop. And this was like a while ago that I heard this. I don't know if things changed, but it's supposed to stop right at Igris. Um, when we meet him, that fight. Oh, that's where season one is supposed <clears throat> to stop. Well, I think the first half, cause it's going to be different cores and stuff. So the okay. first part is supposed to stop it. Igris, so we'll see. Yeah, we will see. Uh, we'll solo see. leveling is we'll too see. big. I think solo leveling is just too big of a name in the webtoon space for them to mess up, fumble it. Yeah, <laughs> I don't. I don't know. They fu- they fumbled this God of High School, and uh, the animation was pretty good. But they, yeah. they you know, 
Eh, but you know, but everything is for Tower of God when it comes to like the they, they almost game. no they almost fumbled Tower of God too. A lot of people didn't like Tower of God anime. A lot of the well hardcore yeah. ones anyway. But yeah, yeah. If but you're a hardcore fan, you definitely didn't they like changed that some of the wording. Too. That's why. Yeah, I mean they changed wording, left out some parts and stuff, but it's it's just one of those things. It's tough. I think. Um, it's tough because the pacing of what I mean, the pacing of webtoon series is 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 different from manga, mm-hmm. and so it's hard to do the one to one. I was just about to ask you that. Do you think it's because um, a typical <laughs> webtoon chapter is like three or four regular manga chapters, and it's difficult to yeah. try to adapt? And when you're so used to one style and adapting, and you're trying to switch to this whole new genre, do you think that's an issue? Yeah. So I think one one webtoon episode is roughly fifty panels. One manga chapter, if you're in Shonen Jump, probably a hundred panels. So it's uh, it's one manga chapter is roughly double the length of um, a webtoon episode. But what you're doing in the manga chapter is going through the same story beats, mm-hmm. like the same like writer's hero's journey or whatever, mm-hmm. like the climax and all that stuff, and then the cliffhanger just you just have more room to do it so what ends up happening is like the webtoon stuff when you fully adapt it one-to-one to animation or something and if you Mm -hmm. copy the panels it would just seem like everything's moving so fast because it is moving super fast Mm -hmm. so that's like the challenge that they're trying to do which is like like okay how do i make an animation because like now i'm adapting to animation where it's like the longer version right of all this stuff like one episode is like i don't know like four probably maybe it's two manga chapters and therefore four webtoon chapters you know so it's like how do i how do i how do i adapt this without making it feel like it's going like up down up down up down up down right Mm -hmm. dropping you on cliffhangers every five seconds um so i think that's tough but someone has to do it right i think if they can do it in live action which is roughly uh, it's like kind of the same length as like an animation episode like you can just do the same thing yeah so I, I think live action is a little bit different because you can make like each episode an hour and be good. Like 40, 40. I was going to yeah. say like, yeah, if you have a 40 minute episode, then you're like, oh shit. Like, yeah, I think it's like yeah. real easy for that. But I think when you're trying to trim it down to like 23, 25 minutes, it's like, uh, it's kind of difficult. It's kind of difficult. Yeah, it's tough. I don't know. Um, What are your top five favorite webtoons right now? top five favorite webtoons i liked jungle juice mm-hmm. yard style i liked the boxer i liked uh i didn't really like teenage mercenary i liked it at the start but then i got I was like this is just repeating itself over and over mm-hmm. again <laughs> so hot take some people really like teenage mercenary yeah. um what else am i reading right now i'm reading a lot of manga but like oh another webtoon i don't know i think solo leveling is like really good i read it a lot yeah over and over again i've read solo like on, three times so <laughs> yeah for reference on like action i think omniscient reader is also really good mm-hmm. um where am i at that's four dude i i have so many that i have on my list Man. i don't even know but why i don't my know what four. the fourth one is though my backlog is ridiculous I don't know what the fourth one is. If I looked up, if I just looked at it, it would come up. But I don't know. I don't know what the last one is. I I started the world after the fall. Mm, It was just, I thought it was, I thought the art was crazy. But I Mm. thought it was just okay. I don't know. I don't know what you guys. What do you guys think about that series? Uh, Oh, world after fall. It's cool. (laughs) Um, I I know it was the authors who did um, Omniscient Reader's previous work. That was his first series. Oh yeah. So I think yep. it was cool. Do I think it's better than Omniscient Reader? No, but yep. I mean that's just me. <laughs> so uh, some people yeah, may, yeah, may yeah. disagree, but I just Omniscient Reader is clearly his best work. Um, and I yep. guess especially since people consider that part of the Holy Trinity, along with my S class um, hunters or the S class that I raised, as along with um, what's the other one of the Holy Trinity? Um, Damn, it's it's on the tip of my tongue, but I can't can't get it now. Now I gotta look it up. Shit. Uh, <laughs> it counts family. Lout counts family. I think that's gotcha. 
Yeah. So. Gotcha. I also really liked Everything Is Fine, which is like an American series, which I thought was pretty interesting and like I'm, really weird. I'm cur- <laughs> I'm currently catching up to season two. I like waiting till they um waiting until he finishes a season and then just binging it. Yeah. That is that, it's just crazy. That is such kind of- a weird yet crazy yet good series. Because when I originally seen I'm like, yeah. why would I want to read something with people with cat heads? Like well, what is this? <laughs> and then I read it and I'm like, yeah, this is so fucked people. up. Yeah, it's just mad creepy. So I'm like, yeah. I was like, wow, this is very different. So that one is probably shot. I like Shotgun Boy too. Shotgun Boy was a good one. Mm-hmm. See, out of their works, I actually like Bastard the most. Bastard. Yeah, that's fair. I've heard about that one. I haven't read that one. I read Sweet Home and I read um, Shotgun Boy. I think I messed up because I read Bastard first, and now I don't like any other series that they do. I don't. Maybe I, I should why. check. I should check out Bastard then. You I should. haven't. I haven't checked it's, that out. It's really good. It's really good. Oh, there's also one called Death's Game. That's an underrated one. Oh, look, I have a friend named Trent. He he swears by the series. That's like his favorite series ever. That series is is pretty solid. I I like the art. Bro is going through multiple lives. I think it's pretty interesting. It oh. is. It's very interesting. They they have a lot of interesting ideas and series out there that other when it's not the oh I died and let me you know be reborn again so I can be the most OP person to ever live on earth. Um when it's different series, you know, kinda like that, I enjoy those so much. Kinda like um Survive to Revive. That was one that just released on Webtoons, I think, mm-hmm. last week. Interesting series, pretty much your you die by you know committing suicide and then you get this chance to be reborn but you're in purgatory and you have to do certain things um to people that are in the living realm in order to get back it's like a survival game in purgatory in order to get what's back. it called die to survive yeah survive to revive that's, cr- that's a crazy idea. right it's, it's a crazy <laughs> concept because like okay so everybody who's in this realm committed suicide and this magical being, I don't know if it's God or whatever, or just a system, but you you have two choices. You can either go back by competing in this survival game, and or you can just stay dead and go to hell, or heaven or hell, most likely hell. So, yeah. but if you choose to survive and go through this game, then you get a vision of what your future is going to be once you survive if you survive through this game Mm. so like you may be rich your kids may be rich you know you may and it's, it's just a whole bunch of different ideas and things that if you make it through this survival game you're gonna be set for life pretty much yeah and, interesting i'll check it out and it's kind of and they have a PUBG aspect to it as well where you only start off with a backpack mm. and certain little items and you have to make it work mm. it's crazy hell yeah crazy series. it sounds super cool <clears throat> it definitely is i, I was actually you, shocked by you it. you checked out a uh, black sun or ordeal i only bring those up because those are uh some series that we've interviewed the authors for and mm-hmm. pretty amazing artwork going on there yeah yeah i've seen black sun i actually know i know the author i've also talked to the author of ordeal Mm -hmm. yeah i've checked those series out they look pretty pretty awesome i'm not caught up on either of them but i found it interesting how ordeal has like he's got like music on that thing yeah it's kind of like a vibe um and the fighting is just crazy and the art is crazy um same with black sun (laughs) Brand's great. The fact that he does all of that himself, he does the story and the art um, for Ordeal is, and the music as well, is crazy. I'm like, jeez. Yeah, it's insane. <clears throat> insane, insane. His pen game is great, though. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> That's for sure. The so fact yeah, that he it, thought it, his it, season one artwork was trash. Like, I was crazy. Like, I was like, how? Crazy. <laughs> Do you have any advice for authors who may want to start their own series? um start their own series if they've never done it before maybe maybe post on can like you post on canvas the easiest way to get picked up is by putting something out there 
So you need to put your some put something out there. That's what I did with all these competitions, the manga competitions. Is like mm-hmm. putting work out there that people could see, people could could see what you're capable of, and then after that, like once they see what you're capable of, like people just start reaching out. So I would say like that's the first thing, mm-hmm. which is like a lot of people just don't finish a project. Most likely, you won't go straight to originals, right? Because mm-hmm. if you've never done anything before, like why would someone? Why would a publisher, you know, just just pay you if you haven't like right. done, done, done anything yet that they, they can tangibly see? So you know you have to do something, and then the second part is marketing. I think a lot of people are just not marketing themselves. I think ultimately, mm-hmm. like you know, it's a hard part about being an artist or creator. But you know, um, the most important thing is you know is 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 probably marketing because like you know there's series that are out there that are just okay that get so much success just because um they mar- they market it better right um and there's some series that are completely underrated and those are the people who put a lot of effort and stuff time and stuff into it but the reality is like you got to market the project otherwise no one's going to read it and if no one reads it then you could also get canceled early which is not good so now that that is a question so you've been on the you're currently on the canvas side and you're currently on the original side as far as webtoons is concerned do you think the way the canvas, the webtoon canvas structure is set up to where it makes it really hard to um, for people to find your series? Canvas doesn't make it hard for people to find my series. Um, I think you. the problem is you can't rely on canvas as a platform to market your stuff mm-hmm. for you. You have to you have to drive the traffic yourself. So. Uh, I don't even post that much on Canvas. I was mm-hmm. just doing it for a, like a client project, but I would say like, yeah, you gotta just you gotta do it all yourself. Uh, originals is different because someone else, the webtoon, has a stake in your success, right? Mm-hmm. You got the machine so they're behind inherently you. going, yeah. So they're inherently gonna want to push your project to more people. Canvas, you own the project completely yourself, and. You know, it's and so, and there's no one that's involved in any way, so you can do anything you want with that mm-hmm. IP, and so therefore, it's really up to you to market the project yourself, right? Mm-hmm. So I would say, anytime, like you, you just never rely on anyone other than yourself. That's mm-hmm. what I. That's what I always say. Like I never, I, even for originals, I don't. I don't rely on Webtoon to do anything because mm-hmm. I'm like. I, I just like I don't know because if you do that then you become like the publisher's like little yeah what's it called puppet the little <laughs> little, pu- little yeah, I was gonna say bitch but like, <laughs> sure, same thing uh, you're like patting your head hey, like oh uh, you're just making you know you I want the power you have the marketing power to to push any project to, to make it successful <clears throat> mm-hmm. then you know then you're you're you don't rely on any publisher. In fact, they'll want you more. Mm. It'll be like, okay, like, you know, so. Yeah, because the reason why I want to ask you that is because, of you know, of course, we've interviewed a lot of people and I've talked to a lot of people, you know, behind the scenes and everything. And a lot of them get frustrated with Canvas because, um, and it, okay, so first of all, it's no secret that Webtoons is primarily driven by romance series. So sure. any any time when there's a romance series, it's automatically just for whether it's them doing it or it's just the base, whatever the case, romance series always go directly to the top. So and then with the tags, when you're tagging your series for people to find it, you have romance series that are also in your tag. So like you might have romance action or something like that, and it probably has little to no action, but the romance series still have action tag in it. So it yep. filters over. And because anybody can post on Canvas, no matter what, it's like a clusterfuck of so many different series and you have to go like a yep. hundred pages deep just to find something. Yep. Yep, that's why you gotta do all your marketing off platform. You know, I mm-hmm. make TikTok videos like three or four times, not three or four times a day, maybe like twice a day. You know, mm-hmm. I just like put out a video, I post on all these platforms. Like, you know, I've invested in my own, like a team that literally just makes webtoon edits mm-hmm. and puts them, puts them on the internet for me, for my series. Right. You know, it's like the amount of, you know, it's, you just have to think, you just have to market your own stuff. And obviously, you don't have to spend, 
money like I do to do the marketing, but if you just put in the raw energy to, to market your own projects, like there's going to be returns on that. So I think a lot of people just don't put themselves on the internet enough mm-hmm. because they think that creating the project is enough, but honestly, creating the project is only half of uh, yeah, the thing. Yeah, half of it. Well, yeah. Half, you know? Marketing is the other half, mm-hmm. and well, marketing is like the other 80%, and then maybe finding a new home for your project. If you do your own project, and then you want to take it to Netflix or take it to something else, like that's another mm-hmm. thing. You also have to market yourself, and guess what? All the those people care about is the numbers. They'll be like, okay, what are your, how many readers do you have? How much mm-hmm. money are you making off this? You know, how many episodes do you have, etc. They don't care about, I mean, they care about how good your story is, for mm-hmm. sure. They also care about how other people perceive your series, because any, you know, how good how good something is is um is subjective mm. truly so um the only thing that a lot of these executives speak to are uh, are, are the numeros as they say mm-hmm. <laughs> that that is very true that is very true that's where my finance bro side comes in <laughs> <laughs> right 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 shout out to the finance bro side the, the, num- the numbers but that um, helps you i mean get to where you are right now too and knowing how to yeah it makes me really really yeah it's really easy for me to pitch i'm really good at pitching i'm really Mm -hmm. good at obviously the business side of all this stuff and and all that so also networking networking is is also a good way um another form of oh yeah people can do just network reach out because we we've had tons of people reach out and be like hey can you you know do a video on my series on you know on your channel and stuff like that so that's dope yeah so we we get those requests a lot and like i said the reason why i asked the canvas question because i go to canvas because i know how hard it is to get seen on canvas so i always try to scrounge and go through canvas series make a video on it and you know just to help push their series or get it out there for more people to see but it's hard for me because I have to go like 200 pages because it's like one, it's a bunch of random series. And then you have uploads from like Osiris scans. And like the other day I've seen um, somebody uploaded Blue Lock to Webtoon Canvas. <laughs> and I'm like, fam, <laughs> like they literally took the manga chapter Blue Lock and just uploaded it. So it's all these That's things so you got to navigate through. And it's, it's very hard to find. <laughs> a lot of series it's tough it. it's tough i think it's like it's like that there's also like half of the projects on there maybe mm-hmm. like could be ai generated yep. too like some people that's could true. just be like putting ai shit on there like so that's why it's tough because the canvas stuff is not um vetted mm-hmm. in a way that is it's not like tiktok like you know if i were on tiktok and i upload like an image of someone naked you know the algorithm mm-hmm. would capture that but when when you're on here um it's hard for them to automatically like capture whether or not something is infringing on someone's intellectual property mm-hmm. because there's no built-in system for that same as uh, mm-hmm. they don't do that on tiktok either like anyone right. can post about whatever right so um yeah i think it's a really tough problem to solve like which is like hey there's a lot of garbage on canvas that mm-hmm. is not even legal to be on there right <laughs> so, it, it really is. And then there's also there's also the problem of like yeah there's just like that is there's that problem which is like ultimately like saturating the platform right which is like makes it hard when when you have mm-hmm. 200 things that are generated automatically or taken from somewhere else that they're not that that are they're exclusive to somewhere else mm-hmm um uh versus like hey maybe there's two projects that are really good and are being clouded by those so i think it's tough definitely definitely (laughs) but um we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up here i just want to say thank you again for thank you you know year and a half in the making bro yeah (laughs) (laughs) we appreciate you and all the time you've given us right definitely um we would love to have all three of you on for just a talk you and you pen and jack um i don't know how your schedules look hopefully when season one ends at just a goblin um if we can make something like that happen that would be great and we can just talk yeah, about why don't we season talk one and yeah why don't we talk when season one's over i think um yeah that would be that'd be cool i think uh yeah i think 
since they've already been on here, I'm sure that they would be comfortable with doing that. Mm. Our schedules, I mean, it would probably be like a nighttime or a early day thing because it's weird. Or it'd probably be around this time because Jack mm. is Jack is in in the UK or whatever. Yeah. So. Mm. Yeah. But the last time we did it was weird when we did it the time right with him. Oh man, I think it was, it was like six a.m. your time, and it was like eight a.m. my time or something. Because he's two hours behind me, oh. so and I'm one hour behind you. So, oh jeez, yeah. So yeah. It's, it's I would, West Coast. <laughs> if he ever told me to wake up before ten a.m., I would literally be like, "You're crazy." <laughs> <laughs> I have not woken up before 10 a.m. in years. Like I'm so. Well, it's because you go to you go to sleep late though, so that's why. I right? go to sleep like three or that's, four. Yeah, that's pretty, true. pretty, yeah. pretty I, late, late, late night boy. I wish I could do that, but again, well, I mean, you live in a you live in a city that never sleeps. So that is true. It's true. I know, it's not me going outside. It's me typing on my laptop at 3 a.m. in my yeah, room. Yeah, but you still but... hear all the the ruckus, bro. <laughs> it's, it's true. It's true. <laughs> All right, but thank you again for you know making time out of your schedule, um, just hanging out with us, talking. Um, I'm pretty sure just the goblin is gonna be just fine. You're gonna get greenlit for season two if you haven't already, because just the numbers on it has been crazy as well. I think it's what like eight, series, eight nine million readers right now, or nine million views. Yeah, I think, I think we have eight. We just hit. We're at eight point one as mm-hmm. of today, I think. But yeah, it's growing. I think it'll be. It'll be good. I think we're hyped for um, for the end of season one because mm. uh, it'll just be crazy, be crazy, 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 crazy end. Sound like a death to me, but <laughs> or like... reveal, reveal or death, or, yeah. or, reveal. or reveal. There's a lot of mysteries in there. Exactly, dude. Or so much. All right, so much. that's it for this one. Hope I, you guys I, I, enjoyed. Oh, yeah. oh, go ahead, G. You were saying something? No, no, it's good. It's good. I can ask him after. Oh, okay, okay. All right. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. You did. Make sure to drop a like, sub to the channel, share this out on social media. Also, go ahead and sub to Just a Goblin. If you haven't already, the link for the series will be in the description below. Um, Before we wrap up, Brandon, is there anything you want to plug really quick? Any other projects or anything you want to plug? Um, Just a Goblin. Check it out. Um, Samurai no Tora is going to be a series that also comes out on Webtoon. Coming soon? Later this year. Later this year? Okay. Yeah, I think it's in the, in the summer. It's almost summer. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and then, uh, yeah, just God Games, another good one to check out if you're ever into the mythology stuff. I covered that one on the channel. They already know that one. <laughs> yeah. So, not caught up. Um, I just did like a two hour video catching up. And that was like a couple of weeks ago. Two hours? I think it was two hours. Was it two hours? Insane, dude. Was it two hours? I don't <laughs> this know. Man is insane. It, it was close. <laughs> like the longest video I did was um the catch up a world after the fall, and that was three hours. But oh my god. Yeah, that was the longest one <laughs> yeah. I ever did. But I right. <laughs> catch you guys next time. Peace. <laughs>